Welcome to yet another episode of Nerds with Badges. Uh, this has been a really interesting weekend for me. Um, my screen is all like needs to be clean. Anyway, um, I went to Comic Con, a uh, Los Angeles Comic Con, on Friday. I went with a couple of friends, and we did a video. So I'll have that footage uploaded as soon as it's edited. And uh, we were there for a few hours. I was really like on the fence about going because I had a cold and um, I was just like blowing my nose like every five minutes. It was just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the hell. It was, like, it was like a summer cold and it felt like summer cold and allergies mixed together. Um, but it was nice. It was really nice outside. So um, it was, you know, it was good weather. It, was, it wasn't too wasn't too hot, wasn't too cool. Uh, highlights uh, was um, Rosario Dawson, which I, I didn't even know that she was going to be there. So I don't really pay attention to a lot of this stuff. I mean, I kind of look at the guests, but I usually just, when I go to comic book conventions, I'm usually just there for comic books, which is like really such a small part of the comic con. I don't even know why they call it comic cons because less than like probably 10% is actually comic books. And, you know, I was walking around. And it was so funny because I made a comment. I was like, damn, it's the comic con, but like, I don't see anything, no flyers or nothing like saying where the comic section is or anything like that. Somebody walked by and they were like, they were like laughing at, you know, they were like, you know, like, yeah, you're exactly. <laughs> Just, I was looking for Storm number one because there's a new series that just came out. And, you know, it always helps me anyway to have to, you know, to like have um, something uh, it's like a goal. So if I'm going to go to a convention or something and maybe I'm looking for a Funko figure, you know, or maybe I'm looking for a particular comic book, I might be looking for a movie or a DVD or something. But always just not just walking around aimlessly uh, it really doesn't help my anxiety at all. <laughs> so I was looking for Storm Number One. I did find a variant for like eighteen dollars, and I really wish I had bought it because um, it seems like maybe Number One has become something of a you know of a, of a collector's item. You know, I don't know why I didn't think about that, but um, a friend of mine's who lives out of the country said he was going to try to find one for me but I was on, I was on eBay earlier today and I actually found one so they're going to ship it to me it's a variant cover so um, I think it was I think I paid like 15 bucks so I got it cheaper than what I would have if I was at Comic Con but I would have had it in my hands you know so, but I did I'm going to read the book I actually bought it on my Kindle last week so I'm going to read it it looks interesting I keep you know i'm trying to put myself on restriction you know just to, so i um you know i have a lot of different responsibilities uh so i have to like really be you know mindful of my spending um so i said that i said i'm just gonna collect two comic books one marvel comic and one dc comic and i like the magical type characters so i decided that i'm gonna i was reading blade but Blade went crazy and turned into a bad guy, and now his series is over with, so I don't know what the hell they're doing with Blade. So Ultimate Black Panther is still a relatively new series, so I jumped on that. And with DC, Wonder Woman is, you know, that's like I've been trying to stick with Wonder Woman for years. And Wonder Woman, you know, they will have these series, you know, and they'll have then they'll just like cancel it. It'll be like, you know, they'll have different series and then they'll just start over with another number one. So I think, I think the Wonder Woman that I'm reading now, the series is only like up to eighteen or something like that. I think it's, it's not, not that high, but you know the continuity is all weird, because you know they did the whole fifty two, and then they you know they did, you know they they now they're doing something else. They have another rebooting with the DC Universe uh, comics. Something happened recently with Amanda Walla, and she went crazy and I don't like 
I mean, I, I don't like the fact that they made her just a straight up bad guy. But she she caused a bunch of problems and took away everybody's powers and this big crossover, which I hate because it was an, it was already trying to trying to keep up with the with the blade crossover that Marvel did months ago, the Blood Hunt, which is the same name as as a, as a video game I play like almost every day. But Blood Hunt is a big Marvel event. And it was all orchestrated by Blade, who'd been possessed. And Blade had uh, opened up all these portals all over the world. And all these vampires came and just pretty much... So it's like, I don't know, I'm just trying to imagine if something like that... I mean, it's like a big event. It wasn't like an Elseworlds tale or like a multiverse type of story. I mean, it actually happened for them to do something big like that. So now, like, the entire world knows that vampires exist because of this event. And vampires are now able to walk out in the sun. Miles Morales is a vampire. And um, I think there was a missed opportunity for them uh, to, you know, they could have done some, you know, I, I hate when they do these storylines and then like, then it's over with and then it's really like no lasting, you know, no lasting effects. And now the Avengers are, looks like they're getting ready to go into another big storyline. Um, I guess because Doctor Doom is now the new Sorcerer Supreme, so that was that was something that came out of Blood Blood Hunt. So I guess it did have some lasting effects. Um, but um, yeah, I just I it was like forty different books to, to read the whole storyline of Blood Hunt, and that was like hundreds of dollars to read. I got to a point where I said, you know what, I'm not gonna buy all these books. I'll just go on YouTube and read. You know, or uh, watch some videos where they talk about. I just, it was just too much, man. I mean, I did buy a lot of the books, but some of the books they really didn't even matter. They really didn't really have hardly like any any real connection with the, with the main event. I just I hate when they do stuff like that. So, so anyway, I I really am gonna try my best to stick with just. Black Panther, Ultimate Black Panther, and Wonder Woman. I'm I'm curious about Storm. I like her as a character, but I don't know if I'll if I'll continue the series. The artwork looks really nice, though. I mean, the covers look really nice. And uh, what else did I do Friday? Oh, I meant to talk about. I watched the new Salem's Lot. And I know I I didn't really know much about what was going on with this movie. I knew it had been delayed. But I didn't know that that Warner Brothers had pretty much shelved it for like a year and they didn't want to release it. And Stephen King had to do like a Zack Snyder kind of thing to just kind of like uh, campaign to get the movie released because it was done. And I watched the movie, you know, I, I, I heard some really weird reviews. I think it's become like very trendy to just hate everything, man. And I hate that about fanboys, about just... A lot of people that are into video games and comics and the things that I like, I mean, in no disrespect, man, but man, some of y'all are just like too damn freaking critical about everything. And uh, I watched it. I watched the movie and I, I thought I thought it was OK. I mean, it compared to the original, the original Salem's Lot is the only vampire to this day that really freaked me out. Really, actually, <laughs> the movie is just the creepy atmosphere uh, so I think that they did a good job with this movie, with the, with the new remake. I, it was a lot better than the, than the 2004, I think it was. They did a 2004 version with Rob Lowe. And I, I, I didn't like the fact that they made the master vampire. They just try to kind of try to make him like comedic. And I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't really dig that because if you see Salem's Lot, the original Salem's Lot, the master vampire, really didn't say, I don't think he said anything. I don't remember him having any dialogue at all. He was just real scary. This just really had this, you know, the whole feeling of this town, people just disappearing, and there's just this gloominess everywhere, people vanishing, nobody knows what's going on. And there's this house that's been bought by this guy, and he moves, you know, he, this mysterious guy, he brings this big ass box you know obviously it's a coffin and the master vampire is in it and the master vampire you know he just starts people just start disappearing and they start turning to vampires and it's really it was really creepy 
and there's one creepy scene, and they they did they they redid the scene in the new in the remake. It wasn't it wasn't quite the same, but you know they they stuck with it. So I don't know if maybe we go into spoiler territory. So um, just letting you know because there's this one scene that takes place in the hospital, where in the in the first in the original David Soul, the main character, is sitting there in this hospital room, and he's got so much time to start my shift. So he's waiting for like I guess he's waiting. I don't know if he's. I can't really remember if he's waiting for the vampire to wake up or if they. Because I know in the new version they specifically waited for the vampire to wake up to prove to the doctor that it was really a vampire, and uh, Alfie Woodard uh, played the uh, the doctor in the new one, which is really cool. We had some, you know, we had some representation there, which is you know, which is nice. And uh, so anyway, in the scene, David Soul is in the, he's in the hospital just sitting there, and the lady just comes back to life, and it's like really freaky how they did the makeup on her and everything. She just sits up and she's all like, she's got the big vampire teeth and David's soul is all like freaking out, you know, and he's, <laughs> doctor comes in and he's like freaking out and David's soul, he, I know he takes these like popsicle sticks and he like tapes them together with this like uh, masking tape and he just like starts saying the Lord's Prayer <laughs> and he puts the cross, he puts the cross on the vampire woman when she, cause she's like trying to get him, you know, she's like lunging at him and everything and, they're like fighting and knocking over tables and chairs, and he puts the cross on her forehead, and she just like, ah, she just screams, and she, I don't want to say she doesn't explode. It's almost like she kind of implodes, but she, she just disappears, and like then there's like tables and chairs in the room that just kind of like pull, they move like they're like almost like this force from her. I don't know, I mean, she got sucked into nothingness and it just kind of affected the furniture in the room, uh, which I thought that was really cool that they did that. Uh, you know, it really made it, 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 it made it more like realistic that they did that. So I ended up, I watched that before I went, I watched the new version of, of Salem's Lot before I went to my comic, um, LA Comic Con. I want to do a review on it, a more in-depth review, but I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really cool. And, you know, the other main character, one of the, uh, well, it was a character named Mark, just like in the original, but this time he was played by a black kid. He's kind of like a little, like a nerd, really into monsters and stuff. And really, Mark was the only person in town who just kind of knew what was going on. And, you know, he was almost like a, you know, like a lone vigilante in this version anyway. But you know, like kind of remind me of myself because when I was a kid, I was into like monsters and collecting action figures and all that stuff. Um, so anyways, I, I got like 10 minutes to go. So I'm going to go and start my shift, change into my uniform. Well, actually, I don't have to change into anything because it's under my, under my hoodie. All I have to do is just grab my coffee and just go over there. And I'm starting my, sh I'm starting my shift Hopefully tonight will be quiet and peaceful because last, last week when I worked, there was some lady with a damn machete outside. And I didn't even know that she had a damn machete. I just walked by her. I had no idea that she had a machete. She was swinging it in my direction when I walked past her. She started yelling at me, yelling racial stuff <laughs> at me. This is crazy. I mean, she literally started yelling wet back at me and securitas. And she was out there with a machete, and I saw she had something in her hands when I walked by. I was on I was on my way from I wasn't on patrol. I think I, I might have been coming back from break or something to go relieve the other security guard. I think, but I didn't even know that she had a machete until like my supervisors told me later because they saw everything on camera and I had to write an incident report. And I'm like, I had to write an incident report. Nothing happened that I knew of. I'm just glad that she didn't swing on me, man, because, you know, I I don't want to, like, get in trouble for fighting with someone out in the street because of some stupidness. But, man, I mean, this, like, just goes to show you can be minding your business and just, like, something crazy can just happen out of, out of the blue, just out of nowhere. Um, so that's another another uh, incident, the long line of incidents that just really keeps almost like writing on the wall, like it just – definitely time for me to get out of security. I can see myself doing this 
until sometime probably next year. I um, just really want to focus more on being a content creator and focus on my books and my animation and films and things. I mean, I have a lot of different things I want to do. And having a nine to five job sometimes makes that difficult. You're just tired. You're just exhausted. And spiritually, you know, I feel like it does something. But I want to get to the point where I'm just making a living off of my off of my art. And I don't know. I've been doing security for this company for 17 years, man. I just feel like it's just time for me to really get out of security because it's, uh, it's really just getting a little bit too crazy for me. So maybe, you know, 2025, that's the plan anyway. My supervisor said, one of my supervisors said, you got one good year left in you. And I thought that was funny. So I'm going to I'm gonna go right now. That is, this is my video for now. And uh, it is the 6th of October. And uh, I cannot believe it. Christmas is right around the corner. I'm going to start saving money for that, that uh, high-end gaming PC laptop that I want to get.